Do you remember this toy? Yeah. That was my favorite toy. I don't know why, but it was really special for me to play with this toy. Because, because this toy brought me to a different world. When I was playing with this toy, I was playing there. I was playing with Saint Seiya, my favorite cartoon when I was a young kid. Reflecting on that, I realized that I actually wasn't buying the toy. The toy itself, it doesn't mean anything. I was buying the possibility of going to that world, the world of my dreams. The world Saint Seiya. I was buying that. I was really passionate about this cartoon. It was my favorite one. This martial arts guys saving the world against these terrible forces of the bad in the world. Now, 25 years later, I'm a grown man, or at least is what my mom says. And I'm passionate about the different things. One of those things is, is the reason why we all are here today. And it's, a, it's, about, it's about buying some other stuff too. We are now here buying another experience. What, we're here buying a new dream. But we are not the only ones in the history that we're buying dreams. In the 18th century, the man invented this. The steam-powered machine. And it changed the world. It changed the world into a place in which people could afford, could buy factory-produced goods. So we changed our life and we decided to move outside of the of the village, of the small village, and then we went to towns, we went to big cities, and started working in order to pursue that dream of buying factory produced goods. It was called the first industrial revolution. And for that first industrial revolution, we need that first industrial revolution management. Focus on just one word, productivity. So we wanted to be able to produce more things so that we could, we could get more people getting to their dreams. That was awesome, changed the world. In the 19th century, the human being invented a new thing. Mass production. Ford, in his car manufacturing structures in the US, started a new way of producing goods, focused on reducing the cost of producing a new good, what we now call marginal cost. So that changed the world again. People was able to afford new goods that were that were much more expensive and only reachable by people that were really wealthy, like cars. So the dream of Henry Ford was to get people that were working for their company to afford cars that they were producing themselves. We all know this. So everybody could get, could buy the, the, the car they wanted, but should be black. We all know this. So, the dream there in this new society was to get people to afford different products. So, the dream was affordable and factory produced goods. This was the new dream. That's what we call the second industrial revolution. For this second industrial revolution, we needed management. It's a very new thing, it's a very new science that we created in management, and it's very important. So the second, revol the second industrial revolution management was focused on one word, reducing, one concept, sorry, reducing marginal cost. So goods were every time more affordable. 
Now we are in the 21st century. Things have changed also. Now we made communications affordable for everyone. We made information reachable by everyone. Computing is on our hands. It's very easy to get, it's very cheap to buy. And that changed the world. We created created commons. So knowledge is now something that we enjoy sharing. And we enjoy both producing and consuming. That changed the world. We're now working on new kind of energies, new types of energy, such as renewable energies, something that really concerns our society right now. We're even thinking about Internet of Things. So it's not only that we want the information to be shared between human beings, but also we want the information to be shared by machines. We also are able to print those goods ourselves. And maybe in the future, we will be able to print our own cell phones or computer just at home. Why not? So now our dream is customize highly affordable, affordable factory produced goods. Something that is made for me, based on my taste, is really affordable so I can buy it. And it's really cool as the goods that my dear friends have at their homes. So I like to call this the third industrial revolution. We are now living in the transition towards the third industrial revolution. And I'm not the only one thinking this. There are some authors like Jeremy Rifkin that are already writing about this change, about this third industrial revolution happening. Of course, we now need third industrial revolution management. And we're creating this right now. This is about customization. That is something that we still don't know how to do it. We know how to do mass production. We know how to produce with automation, but we don't know how to do customization. And maybe this is the reason because we're here. This is the reason why we're here, because we work in software. And software is created for that. Software is an industry that is based on customization. So now we're not buying the products. We're buying the service of producing the products, of building your own custom-made product. That's why we're now feeling in the need of a new kind of management, the third industrial revolution management. So let's go back in history and let's reflect on how we try to tackle those problems. So we started trying to manage software projects with the knowledge that we had from the past industrial revolution, and that's normal. So we use the science we could get at a time. So for us, for years, plans, documents, contracts, processes and tools were really important to ensure, because we could finally ensure that our project would be a success. And we all know that every software pro project that we work on has been a success, right? Or maybe not. So, perhaps we have a different approach we thought. We learn about this, so we're now finding different approaches that can help us in this world, in this, in this third industrial revolution that we're now working on. So then, we discovered that it's not about the software itself, it's maybe about the product, what we are delivering. It's not about us. We're not as important as we thought. Sorry. So we learn that it's very important to be able to respond to chains on our following plans. It's more important to work on working products and working in documents. Our 
more important tool in the organization is collaboration. So do things together within organizations. And for that, we also need people and interactions. We have to focus on how people work on their products or how, and also on how people interact in order to create those teams that will be successful toward the creation of those products. We learned that. This is great. So we finally know how to create awesome products for our customer, awesome dreams. Yay, finally we got Agile. We're there. It's the way to go. We all know that. But even though I've seen in my experience now as an agile coach that many organizations they try to go agile to be successful on delivering products, sometimes I, I feel like this. I feel like we are still not there. We can create awesome products, but we don't buy products. Remember, we don't buy products. What do we buy? We buy dreams. We have the possibility of enjoying a pleasant, pleasant experience. It's what we want, what we, we buy. So that's why I believe that Agile is not an IT movement. It is, it's not an IT methodology. It's a business model to create delightful experiences for our customers. And that's really difficult, but it's the question that we are trying to answer right now. How to deliver awesome experiences? Experiences for millennials. It's a very complicated generation to understand. It's also, it's also known as the generation Y. We're really, really difficult to the light. We can reach everything and anything, and we want it fast. We want it right now, and we want it perfect. And I'm talking about us, because I believe we're more or less the same generation here, the generation Y. But what about the next generation? What about the generation Z? Sorry, but every time that I think about this generation Z thing, I think something like this, generation Z. But whatever. So. It would be really difficult to understand future generations, and we have to start working on that right now. It's not about us, it's about the next generation. And there's a lot of, about empathy that we have to work on before calling ourselves managers in this third industrial revolution. So there is only one way to tackle this problem, that is through experimentation. But this is an agile organization, so we, we try to build things right, and this is great. We try to understand what are the most important things to build, so build the right things, and that's great also. But we have to ensure fast feedback with our final customer. It's the only way to understand their needs and to get empathy for them and deliver experiences. And of course, this is getting every time more difficult, so we have to get every time faster at doing this. So this is the Agile business model that we want to create. This is the third industrial revolution management that we are now creating right here, right now, in this conference. And it's about customization. It's about creating delightful experiences. And it's about experimentation. So one way to do this. And this is really scary because experimentation means that we don't know the result. That's why everybody is so scared about Agile, because it involves uncertainty. And we human beings hate uncertainty. Something that we don't want in our lives. So this is Thomas Kunt. He taught us about how science evolved. And now we are evolving the science of management. Science evolved like this. So we get a model drift, so this is not working anymore. So we need a new model. We need a paradigm shift. And now, right now, Agile in the IT world is becoming normal science. A couple of weeks ago, I was speaking in the PMI conference here in Spain. They are normal science. And they were listening to me, they were listening in Agile as not something that is disruptive anymore, about something that is right there. Working, so it's normal science. 
Isaiah 19. So we need to avoid relativism. It's not about IT. It's about a business model, about a new business model, about a new world of business that we are creating right here, right now. Remember, people buy the, poly, the possibility of enjoying an experience, enjoy the experience of creating Agile, enjoy the experience of creating this third industrial revolution management. Enjoy the experience of being here, changing the world, starting in this conference. Thank you.